All right, well, welcome to the Anchor Daily. My name is uh, Dave Dawson, and we'll be looking at 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 through 17 today. As you can see, I've got two leaders with me here today. Why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us how you're involved at Bethel. Yeah, uh, Zenon Thornton. I'm a Bethel elder, been an elder for just, just shy of two years. Uh, attended Bethel for about 15 years with my family, my wife, and three kids. Um, yeah, uh, also okay. uh, do Fellowship of Christian Athletes in the community as the area director. Yeah, awesome, Zenon. My name's Scott Godwin, I'm also on the elder board, I've been on since the fall, and uh, my wife and I have attended Bethel here for about 14 years. Kids grew up here, they're now grown and gone, but uh, this has been home for a while. Sort of gone. At they're least gone. one of them is still here with you at well, Bethel, right? On their own. <laughs> on the their barrel. own. There you go. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Well, I said the uh, scripture we'll be looking at today is 1 Peter 3. So Zen, and I'll tell you what, once you go ahead and read that, yeah. and the format we'll use today is... Uh, as we have each looked at the scripture, we have a question that we want to ask the other two guys. So I'll, I'll start off here in a second with the first question, but let's take a look at the scripture first. Okay. First Peter 3, 14 through 17. But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear them or be intimidated, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do this with gentleness and reverence, keeping a clear conscience so that when you are accused, those who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Okay, awesome. Give that quick little summary, and then I'll, I'll ask a question here. So this scripture tells us that we are to live, like basically what we're saying, on mission in this world. And it's just very realistic. We're going to have pushback. There's going to be some persecution. There are people that are not going to like us. They're not going to like our message. And yet, we are to respond with gentleness and reverence and not like everybody else. Which brings me to my question. Mm. It is hard to do that. You know, like in, in, in today's world, just speak for myself, there are times where I feel like we as Christians and we and who, are, who are, tend to be more of a, uh, of a conservative type bent, conserving traditional values, it feels like there's this, some of these outrageous attacks on us. Mm -hmm. How then do you not get spun up emotionally and respond with an equal violence, right, or outrageous mm -hmm. behavior. And then it's not just us. It's like, how do we, and if we're all three leaders in our church, how do we help our people to respond like Peter tells us to? Good question. It's a great question. I, uh, it's hard to trust. Uh, you know, it's hard to trust God, if I'm completely honest. And, and I, I kind of boiled it down for two reasons. Uh, number one is kind of this factor of time. Uh, God's timing versus my timing. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. It's hard to wait. It's hard to wait for yeah. resolution to to things uh, that we see in the world. Um, certainly hard to to wait when there's direct persecution. Like how long are we to endure something? Um, our our flesh reaction, our flesh response is is immediate. Mm -hmm. Is immediate, um, and that's never good. It's never yeah. good to respond without without thinking, without without waiting, without considering our actions, um, and without taking it to the Lord. Um, and so the timing factor, it, it, to me, is a reason why we, we lack trust. And, and I, I is that if I could just, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Just, well, hey, just a scripture that came to mind when you're talking is like, you know, James, it says, be quick mm -hmm. to listen, mm -hmm. but then slow to speak and slow to anger. I think it's exactly what you're saying. Totally. Yeah. And that listening, you know, listen to the Lord, right? Um, uh, so it's a passive, it's a passive activity that then can, then leads to, um, I believe to trust, yeah. to trusting the Lord. Um, Proverbs 20, 22, another scripture says this, do not pay back, uh, says, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord. He will avenge you. So the mm -hmm. Lord is in control. Yeah. Ultimately, the Lord will pay back. It's not on me to, to yeah. pay back someone for a wrong that they may have done to me or mm -hmm. in a situation within the world. Um, <clears throat> and then I like this where it says, uh, Isaiah 40, 31, those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Mm -hmm. um, man, waiting leads to blessing, yeah. but it's hard. It's hard to wait. Yeah. So, so that time factor. The other reason why we don't often trust the Lord is um, is hope. We're just in a hopeless situation, or mm -hmm. the world itself feels hopeless. Mm -hmm. Like, when are these wrongs mm -hmm. going to be righted? Mm -hmm. When are things going to be restored? Is this ever going to change? Is this ever mm -hmm. going to change? And I think, obviously, through human history, we've seen, as, as us humans have, have gave a go at this thing, 
we, we fail time mm-hmm. and time again. Mm-hmm. And so for your person that's outside of Christ or even for the Christian, it's hard to, to yeah. sit under that and endure. Like, Lord, when? When are you coming back? Like, you know, yeah. we all want that, but we have to um, live in this world where it is, it is hopeless. The world itself is hopeless. Mm-hmm. And that should drive us to the, to, the, to the foot of the cross. Okay. Mm-hmm. So two powerful words for you is mm-hmm. time, the time factor of being able to wait, but wait on the Lord, not just wait, right? Mm-hmm. It's waiting on the Lord. Mm-hmm. And then hope that he he is going to bring justice. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. I think uh, the two things that jump out to me with these verses that are really hard is one that it's talking about times of conflict mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. using words like suffer and fear, intimidated, <laughs> um, defense. And the thing about it is, is most of us try to avoid conflict, right? right? Yeah. Some of us want to run run from it, and yeah. and yet what God's calling us to, particularly when we're in conflict because of our faith, is He's calling us to lean into it, right, right? and lean into it with Him. Uh, I, th- I think the other real tough part about this, Dave, you kind of highlighted it, is what's our posture supposed to be mm-hmm. in that process, mm-hmm. you know, and this this idea of gentleness, reverence, yeah. um, being able to keep a good conscience, um, that can be really, really hard when you're under attack, right, when you're in the the, the heat of the battle. And so I, I think a couple of things that, that I've found useful in that process is, um, first and foremost, surrender, right? Yes. Well, what, what does it mean to to uh, to give in to God's word every day? Let that pour over you and change you from the inside out. Um, I, I think the other part is recognizing who He is and who I'm not. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Too often when we we come under attack, our, our pride fills up. Right. We we want to fight back, and mm-hmm. and that's not what God's called us to be. Right. And so the surrendering is not to your opponent. The surrendering is to to, God. to the Lord. That's, Absolutely. Okay, got it. Yeah. And I think the other the other thing that I do visually is, and I have to do this multiple times a day, but it's consciously getting out of the driver's seat of my life and letting God get in the driver's seat and saying, "Okay, God, you're driving. Mm-hmm. I'm along for the ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, I trust you." Right, and and maintaining that kind of visual picture. Uh, the the second thing that has been absolutely critical for me is having a team, right, mm-hmm. a, a team around me. Um, those that that I can be real with, I can be vulnerable with, mm-hmm. I can share when I'm in the heat of battle, um, and they are that spiritual sounding board for me, right? They yeah. can, they can, hey, hey, Scott, you know that approach? No, nah, I don't think you need to take that approach. You know, think about this mm-hmm. this way, and and that they pray through that with me. They help hold me accountable. Yeah. You know, we we need we need men like that in our life. We need a small yeah. group around us that that can be that that team to support yeah. us in that process. That, that's really good, Scott. I mean, so many, so many times we, we feel alone, like, mm-hmm. right? Like we're being attacked and stuff. And man, to have people that really are standing with you, it just, it, it gets this over that aloneness. It's like, hey, this, I, got, I got a team with me. Yeah. I, I really like that. Well, Zenin, you, uh, you have a question as well, right? What is your question as we look, as we reflect back on First uh, Peter three, and how are how are we to respond to those that attack us? And yeah. Stuff? So I took a you know going through these verses took a uh, the view of what does it look like for a non believer or a young believer in the faith to mm-hmm. encounter the scripture and to have to have to wrestle with it in terms of facing persecution, um, in terms of you know talk about enduring hardships and like that doesn't sound you know very inviting. So as an evangelistic tool, how do we present? Um, this picture of the true Christian walk mm-hmm. and all that it entails to to a non-believer or as a young believer, like when does it come from kind of the, the self-focus to the to that missional or outward focus? Yeah. How, how do we do that? That's really good. So in my opinion, I think what we share is, I mean, what we're getting back to is the message. Mm-hmm. Like what is the message we are actually sharing with people, mm-hmm. whether we're actually telling them about Christ or they're they're new in the faith and trying to grow, right? So here, here's the way I put it. It's like, I'm not a great farmer <laughs> or a great gardener, but uh, I know this, a seed, right? Like a seed that we put in the ground, whether it's wheat or fruit or something, it contains all the DNA that is necessary. Mm-hmm. It's not all laid out for you to see, but it's, it's tiny, but it's got everything in it mm-hmm. that causes that seed, if it is carefully nurtured and cared for, it will turn into a banana. It mm-hmm. will turn into, you know, a, whatever it happens to be. Okay. I think in the message that we share with people, it is fair to share the DNA of what it means to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean a ton of doctrine and stuff, but at the heart of it, it means following Christ, trusting Christ. And it also means as we do that, that not everybody's going to like that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard in this world. We're going to have pushback. We will have opposition. 
So let people know from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, my fear is that, um, you and I were talking about this earlier, Scott, but my fear is that if we just give kind of the one-sided, it's all blessing and it's all <laughs> awesomeness and, you know. What's then, wrong? Yeah, yeah, what's wrong? It's not going wrong. that way. Hey, yeah. yeah, yeah. When things happen that, that go south, it's like people are like, hey, dude, I'm, like, where's the, <laughs> yeah. where's that other thing you're talking about, right? So I think in Peter, he's laying it out here. It's like, look, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to get this pushback, man. It's, it's, it's going to be hard for you. But there is, and this goes back to your words, isn't it? there is hope, right? Mm. right? There is power here that's going to enable you to go through this That with our eyes wide open. It's going to enable you to, your words, lean into this. Mm. But you can overcome because of Christ's power. Mm. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from the reality of what it, what it really means to follow Christ. Yeah, that's good. You know, I think when we look at this 1 Peter 3, even going back to chapter two, it, it uses some of these exact same words in talking to slaves, right? Mm -hmm. And their their interaction with their master. And then when we get to chapter three, it broadens it to all of us as followers mm -hmm. of Christ and that attitude that we need to take on. And so the context here is, you know, we are under submission, right? Yeah. We are we are in a, a different environment than just it's all rosy, it's all full of blessings right. and um and so we're, we're called to follow Christ's model, and, and particularly when we suffer unjustly mm -hmm. and what that needs to look like. I think the, the thing as I look at these verses, there's some, some practical principles that kind of jump mm -hmm. out to me. Um, the first one is considering yourself to be blessed by God in that process. Um, you know, I think when, when you patiently endure unfair treatment, you're fulfilling God's purpose and plan for your life. Mm -hmm. um, and it's almost the, I find myself thinking the other way, right? When I'm not going through persecution, am I being effective for him, mm, right? right? Am mm. I am I on the sidelines yeah. um, because I'm not under attack? I think the, the second thing that jumps out to me is don't panic or worry. Mm. Uh, that's a trap I fall into, right? When I'm in the heat of conflict, you know, it's that thing that keeps me awake at night it, yeah. or I wake up early in the morning and my brain kicks in and and what I'm basically saying is, God, I got to solve it myself, right? right? I'm going to worry myself yeah, through right. this rather than trust you. And that that really kind of brings me to the third point, which is... Quick, uh, the scripture for you in that one. One of the first verses I memorized, Scott, is out of Philippians, right? Be anxious for nothing. nothing. Yep. That That is amazing. I think mm -hmm. that's what you're calling us to. Don't be anxious about anything. It's like, what? you got to yeah. be kidding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the... the uh, the anecdote for that, I think, is three, which is acknowledge that that Jesus is Lord of the situation, right? Mm -hmm. right? That that He is in control, that He is in the middle of this trial with me, and I can trust Him. He is sovereign. Mm -hmm. um, the fourth thing that it kind of encourages us is to be ready to defend our faith. The, the interesting thing about crisis is it often presents a platform for sharing the gospel mm -hmm. like nothing else, mm -hmm. right? And especially when our actions match our talk. Mm -hmm. And and so that really brings me to the fifth one, which is you know being a person of, in, of integrity. Mm -hmm. um, your integrity is both your greatest defense against unjust criticism, mm -hmm. and it's also the greatest evidence that there's a God in heaven who's powerful and working in mm -hmm. our life. And so, yeah. those are kind of five things that I try and re remember. It's really good. All right. Well, we're on to our third question. We're uh, once again just to kind of take us back to what we're looking at. We're looking at First Peter. Uh, chapter three, where we are told to respond with gentleness mm -hmm. and reverence to those that question us and come against us. So Scott, what do you got? Yeah, so you kind of teed it up at the beginning, which is, you know, it's about living missionally. And and I think my question is, how do we do that? And what do you guys think living missionally looks like? And, and is it an option for mm -hmm. us as Christians? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dave? So I would, yeah, I would probably take us back. I, I know all of us are really concerned with like, oh, what is God's will for my life? Mm -hmm. What does God want me to do? What's my unique passion and all this kind of thing? That, that's fine. But I think to answer your question, living missionally, like what is my mission? I think I'd take us back first to God in, himself, mm -hmm. to his character. Mm -hmm. And here's what we see, that God is a God of mission from the mm -hmm. very beginning. Go back to, remember the whole movie, The Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. to the, the Exodus, right? The children of Israel were enslaved for um, hundreds of years, going up to almost 400 years. And then there's this really cool scripture in Exodus chapter 3. It says, and the Lord says, I have seen their suffering, I have heard their cries, and I have come down. Mm -hmm. So the Lord himself comes down to this enslaved people, 
not just on his own, but he he enlists Moses, who is his spoke, spokesman, his representative. Moses, through the power of Christ, through the power of God, leads the people out of Egypt through these trials and into the promised land. Mm-hmm. I really think that is the model. I agree. That that is, man, right at the heart of it. Mm-hmm. That's what we're all about. Like this whole world is enslaved. God hears our cries. He has come down to us. And then we are, and this sounds terrifying, but we're to be like Moses. We're to align ourselves with God's mission. He works through us to help rescue people and right. to bring blessing. That's an so, amazing thing that you know, God is on mission. It's a rescue mission. Yeah. And that he's He's using us, right, yeah. to do that. Yeah. That, that's so humbling, right, right? That, that he would pick us to be a part of that. Exactly. Yeah, it's like it, like we're plan A, right? Like it's us, right? But, and then yes, but what's plan B? Yeah. It's like there is no plan B. <laughs> it is exactly. That's a little terrifying. It's, it is us, you know. So, um, I think on the rest of the scripture, we could just hit like, what is what is part of the power we have? What if people don't like us? How are we to view ourselves? But really, the way we are to view ourselves is we are those, and our mission we are bringing blessing. Mm-hmm. Just I'll, I'll share one other scripture from the Old Testament. God spoke to Abraham. And he said, Abraham, look, in the middle of this chaos chaos of this world, I'm going to bless you. And through you, I'm going to bring blessing to every family on earth. Mm -hmm. That is us. Mm -hmm. As the Lord speaking to us saying, look, I have blessed you guys primarily by knowing Christ. And as I blessed you with that same blessing, you are to bless others. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, to answer your Mm -hmm. question, Scott, I take us right back to him. The bigger he is, the more we see that he is a God of mission, the more that we will just mm-hmm. align ourselves right. with him. That's good. Yeah, that's good. And I love that you went Old Testament and I went new, right? right awesome. To the Great Commission. There you go. Um, and, and Jesus and the fulfillment of that um, and how he demonstrated it in so many ways. And so when we look at discipleship, um, I, in FCA, we break it down into three E's, engage, equip, and empower. And so what does this mm-hmm. look like for us practically? discipleship in a practical practical manner and, and that that e that first e is engaged engage the community around us we have to engage mm-hmm. the world we have to be an active participant in in what god has called us to do um and so that that's the first step and that's the easiest step right that's being invitational mm-hmm. that's being hospitable that's with your neighbor next door your literal neighbor mm-hmm. um that's with your, your coworker. Um, in your school environment, wherever God has placed you, that's your that's your community, and that's your opportunity to to engage, engage relationally, get to know them. It, it's simple. I think we we complicate it. Um, you know, we don't have to start with a mission trip. Um, we have to start with our, our dude, two feet. dude next door, dude next door, <laughs> um, and just engage. You yeah. got to hit them over the head with the Bible. Your first meeting, say that for the second meeting. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. <laughs> now, how about how about meeting practical needs? You know, and Jesus modeled this as well. So we have to engage our community. Um, then, and then secondly, as we draw them into a relationship, there's opportunity to share, and that's where we can equip. That's mm-hmm. where we go to the Word, right? There's no other, no other resource. God's will is all explained in in, in His Word. Mm-hmm. How we're to live, what we're to do, um, what He wants from us. Um, love God, love others. Um, it's it's pretty simple. We don't have to we don't have to complicate it. Um, and so it, it 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 goes to the Word. Equip with yeah. the Word. Okay. When you get that opportunity to share, once you've built that trust through meeting a physical need, now you can meet the greatest need, the spiritual need. That's and that's, that's that's using the word. And so that's that's that equip stage. And then as they get equipped, if they, they do go to church with you, maybe they they do, they accept the Lord and they get baptized, then it's it's upon us to empower them. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't end then. It doesn't end with just the head knowledge of, of mm-hmm. who Christ is and what he's done and even accepting him. It doesn't stop there. Because Christ said, "We I have a mission for you," and that's that's the go. And so we have to put action to mm-hmm. to our faith, mm-hmm. right? We have to mm-hmm. put put feet to to what we know, and that's um, that's that's probably the hardest part. Um, but we need to know that that God goes with us, and you talked about this, and and so did Scott that that we don't do it alone. Yeah, it's not a we're, we're not we're not working for God. We're we're literally working with Him, mm-hmm. um, and and it talks about that in, in in the Great Commission that that He's with us. He's with us as we go. Yeah. And so um, that's the most important part is that uh, being filled with the spirit um, and, and then living it out. So engaging our, our uh, environment and then equipping with the word and then empowering each other to live it out and, and be disciple makers because it can't mm-hmm. stop with us. Yeah, really good. Well, guys, thank you very much. This is the first time we've done this in this format. You know, I think 
just hopefully there is a, a collective anyway wisdom here that will help us to be and this is the title of this whole thing right to be anchored daily to carry out the mission that God has that God is doing in this world and he's doing through us um, any final words that you guys would like to say basically to the people of our church just as far as living missionally any final final boom I think it's that we, we do get to do it together. Not only with mm. God, we get to do it with each other. Mm. We talked about that. You know, feeling like it's all on me individually yeah. is pretty daunting. Yeah. Um, and it's you know, it's a heavy weight. And we get to do it as the church. We get to do it you together. Know, fingers, arms, legs, yeah. head, you know, all with different skills and abilities. Yeah. We get to do it together. That's Man. exciting. Yeah, I think back to the the comment you made about we're on this rescue mission and there is only a plan A. Yeah. You know, how many people in our life, um, we're the only Jesus they're going to mm. see, right? Yeah. And... God doesn't have a backup plan, mm-hmm. right? And uh, we are his arms, his legs, his hands, his feet um, to reach them. And so, you know, that that needs to be our focus each day. And that's what living missionally is all about. Man. Well, I'll just throw one in as well. Thank you, guys. You know, I have just felt a, how can I say, a renewed energy at our church. Mm-hmm. It's almost like the Lord is, you know, just things go in seasons, right? We've come through a tough season, you know, the COVID and everything else. And I just feel like, man, we're just really on a cool upswing here. Mm. And I pray that we would just do exactly what we're trying to, what the Lord's trying to get us to do, right? right. Turn our eyes outward and, and continue to be in a renewed way, the force in our community and in the world that the Lord wants us as Bethel Church to be. Thanks for joining us today. If you want to check out more podcasts just like this, you can go to Bethel.ch and you'll find amazing selections of podcasts and much more. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can email us with podcasts at Bethel.ch. See you next time.